Okay. Happy Friday, guys. Happy Friday. Here Friday. we are. Happy October. We're in Happy Friday. Friday. Okay, we're back with the lowdown at the Long Beach Green Room. And our disclaimer is we are not doctors, nurses, or medical professionals. The information, including but not limited to text, graphics, images, and other material, are for informational purposes only. The purpose of information material is to promote broad consumer understanding and knowledge of cannabis. It is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding medical conditions or treatments and before undertaking a new healthcare regimen. And never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it. All right, here we are. We have Cody, Angela, and your host, myself, Pam. And today's topic is cannabis math. Algebra. <laughs> How well did you guys do in algebra? Oh my God, I did not pass it. It took two years for me to pass it. Yeah, what is it, <laughs> Cody? <laughs> I didn't do too well either, actually. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, else I, I, I bombed algebra too. Like, I, I don't even know if I even got to, no, I had to go to algebra, right? You have to take algebra in high school. Yeah, right? You have to. But I'm pretty sure I bombed all of my math classes. I used to copy every single day homework in geometry. That's the only way I passed that class. It wasn't until college where I had an awesome professor, shout out to that professor that I took over the summer. So, if you ever take math, like I was in remedial math pretty much in college, like my first year in college. And Me took, too. And I took math over the summer. And when you have math, I mean, in, in high school, like you have so much stuff going on. And if you don't have a very good, you know, direction or tutors or anything like that, you're just going to get lost. But in college, you kind of have to pay attention. I had to pay attention and um, out just spending like two hours or no, Summer class, it was like half a day. I think it was like four hours, four days a week, all summer. I learned algebra. <laughs> right? I learned algebra. And I thought, wow, I'm, where am I, I wonder when I'm going to use this. And in cannabis, I use algebra quite often. Right? Cool to use. But don't you think, wait, don't you think that algebra becomes easier when you can relate it to something? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. When it's if hot. you're, if you're, I mean, you just put a bunch of numbers up on a chalkboard or a whiteboard, or we had that stupid overhead projector thing, and right. you're like, it's like Greek. But if you can't relate it to something tangible, physical, to show what you need to be, I don't think it makes sense. You yes. know, for me, that's what it finally took was when I could actually relate it to something tangible. And for you, you know, like now we use it in cannabis, so it's tangible. We can relate to it, and it's very much like a problem solving tool. Like, you right. know, I'm, I'm a problem solver in nature. So like, I kind of view it as like, all right, we're just going to solve a problem right here. And it's going to, you know, it's going to use yeah. some, you just plug those in, but it's true. It's those applied um, concepts that you like, you know, you put into real life and then you kind of understand it a little better. Yeah. So we're going to go through cannabis math and cannabis math goes beyond algebra, right? It goes through other things, which involve numbers. <laughs> And letters. <laughs> um, okay, so let's just talk about um, numbers as in um, like the law, like what our state, um, our state law says. So Proposition 64, it brought, um, it brought um, different laws um, regarding possession. So let's talk about a little bit about that. So if you are a, oh, I didn't change that one. But if you are a adult use um, consumer and you come into a retail shop, you can purchase up to one ounce per day. In the next, um, in, in a couple slides, we'll go over, you know, break down exactly that, that cannabis math. But um, for everyday living, that's your limit. And to know, knowing your limits will help you if you ever get pulled over and you have, if you are an adult use consume, cannabis consumer and you have one ounce, you are good. If you have more than that, you might get a fine. And right now it's just like a misdemeanor. It's pretty much um, a ticket. If you are a medical patient with a medical recommendation though, you can carry up to eight ounces of dried flour and you can purchase up to eight ounces um, per day. 
but this is very interesting is because our law is funny because it gave our patients more flour to possess, but not more concentrate, which is really what people that are very sick need is concentrate. Absolutely. So, absolutely. Right? <laughs> so, yep, absolutely. Adult use consumers and patients only, they both have the same limit on um, cannabis concentrate, which is eight grams of THC per person per day to buy and to carry. And for medical patients, um, I know some of you guys know some medical patients, um, sometimes they use way more than eight grams per day, and especially if they're um, terminal. Or especially if they're terminal. Yep. I'm medical. So like, <laughs> so some people need to, uh, I mean, there's a, that's like part of legislation that we need to change, right? To give our patients more, um, a higher possession for cannabis concentrates because it's, it's just needed. So age requirements. So age requirements for to purchase um, adult use, you only need your ID, right? Only your ID, right. valid ID, and it could be from any country, right? Yes, any country, as long as it is not expired. Not, not expired, right? Yep. And medical patients. So we always, we tend to say this, um, we tend to say that medical patients have to be 18 years or older to come and purchase. And that is totally correct. They can be 18 and older with a recommendation, a valid recommendation and a valid ID. Both have to be not expired. However, if there's a minor, somebody under 18, they also have to have a medical recommendation, but they have to be with a caregiver that is 18 and older. To purchase. To purchase. So minors can definitely come in, but they have to be with their 18 and older caregiver. Um, okay, so private grows. Private grows, this is another place in legislation that we should definitely change for our um, patients. Back in 215 days, there was a gray area, and it's still kind of gray a little bit because it's, you know, that. Um, you could grow up to 99 plants or more. Like it would just say, as much as the patient needs. That's how much many plants you can grow. That's what it used to be. Like as many plants as you need, that's how much you can grow. Not so much with 64. Now it's six, six plants per household, not even per person anymore. I was gonna say, yeah, it's per household. And that's a big, that is a big um, misnomer. I mean, there was a, like last night, for instance, there was a lot of people on there that thought it was per person, mm -hmm. that it was six plants per person. Yes. Yeah, it's always going to be in the gray area. Definitely. Like, how many plans? And then on top of that, person. you got to think of your local regulations, right? Right. So then on top of the, the Proposition 64, you got to look up your wherever city you're living in that allows, um, you know, and what, you know, actually the state allows, it has to have everybody can grow six plants in their house. But local regulations will, you know, they can put something else on top of that. So like here in Long Beach, we can grow our six plants outside, but it cannot be seen by the public and have to be behind a lot. So there's like extra, extra stuff. Right. But like, I don't know, my little side yard, it has a gate. I could lock it. <laughs> <laughs> so you definitely can't see anything from the street. Right. So, I think it also depends, you know what, that's the laws and the rules and stuff, but you also got to look at your neighbors. Just be aware of them, you know, just be totally aware of what your neighbors are. And talk to your neighbors too. Maybe they yeah. don't know about cannabis. Go have a yeah. talk. Maybe you can do some cannabis education. It yeah. Um, and so on this other side too, is there anything that we missed here? Oh yeah. So yeah, the misdemeanors we were talking about. So um uh, let's see. So the reduction of, um, so there's really no more felonies related to cannabis. It's a misdemeanor. Right. Yes. However, selling to underage, like selling to minors, that's still a felony. That's still a felony. Yeah. You can't sell to underage, uh, right. people under 18. Um, yeah. Those are the numbers for prop 64 about, um, our possessions. Did we forget anything? We, gotta, we went over all of those. No, I think that's good. Yep. Right? All right. So how much is what, right? So these, I mean, these numbers, they're approximate. 
because you know sometimes people get a little heavy and a little light <laughs> on their bowls. Yeah. So this, these are like approximates. This is about approximates that you would get. So if you had a half gram, you could make probably two little 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 pinners, probably two little little joints. And maybe <laughs> me, that would be like one bowl, maybe. I yeah. don't know. Depends how big your bowls are as well. Um, but these are, you know, these are pretty much like average. We're gonna say like super average. Could go higher, could go lower. Right. Um, these are kind of interesting though, because then you can actually, um, if you're doing some budget and you like know how much you're going to consume for whatever reason, whatever your intention is, adult use, medical, these are kind of good um, numbers to know. So then you can budget a little bit better, you know? So well, it's also good. We, we get patients that came in to, um, you know, that come into the dispensary and they're like going to have a party or they're going to have a bunch of people over. So they're trying to gauge you know, hey, if you're going to have 16 people over and you're all going to, you know, what what's the amount that's going to be good enough for me to, you know, purchase or have on hand and stuff. So that's, yeah. this is a real good guide. And like we said, it is an approximation, but mm -hmm. it's a good guide, you know. It is a good guide. So yeah, very, that's a good example, Ange. So like, you know, if you're going to have, I mean, it's time of COVID, so nobody's like, really partying anymore but right you're gonna have like a little barbecue you're gonna have like five people over you know um maybe you're gonna get like seven grams to roll up you yeah. know or he gets like two or three during the time you're sitting there it's almost yeah. like you know how you do any kind of um entertainment right like well it's like if you do the entertainment and you're getting you know you're doing hamburgers it's a quarter pound of meat for per person whether it's hamburger <laughs> chicken or anything so just put that on your grocery list a quarter pound per person of meat and seven grams of uh cannabis per, per five, if you're yeah. having yeah if you're having five people over <laughs> sounds about right to me right it sounds about right. like, <laughs> we'll have like two or three joints maybe Depending yeah. on writing over to like their levels and yeah. So right. yeah, these are really good. Um, a really good graphic, uh, a really good table actually of, of doing that. Great. I'm going to use this actually for parties. It's good. I think we need to come up with a new grocery list, a column for food and a column for cannabis to kind of figure out, you know, <laughs> tinctures to add to the wine. We've been doing tincture pairing with wine. It's very interesting at what it does to the bouquet. So it's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, totally different grocery list because, uh, you know, some people don't smoke. Like if you have guests that come right. over that are, you know, maybe they do tinctures, maybe they have edibles, you know, you're going to have yep. to have some kind of variety. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what we need to f get next time, Pam. A gross, a new grocery list. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I like the grocery list. That's, that's fun. Um, so this is a good graphic too. This is just some good numbers to know about your dry flower weeks. Um, we kind of broke it down to like, you know, really little, little. So your one gram is really this, you know, it's always a percentage of an ounce or a pound. Um, so of, of course, an eighth, this is where we get the eighth from because it's an eighth of an ounce is 3.5 grams. Um, and just it keeps going, going, um, you know, higher. So right. these are just good numbers to know when you're purchasing. Um, and it helps you when you're doing your grocery list, really. So it can yep. help you, um, and your budget, anything, it's like personal budget, right? It just helps you out just a little bit more. We used to only like really know these numbers back in the day, only because we were making deals. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I was like a pound usually is like 448 grams, a half pound, half is like 124 usually. Yeah. So it's, it's almost there. It's pretty much on board. It's, you know. It's, kind of there they never really match up it's always like some like you know some like remainders on that yeah you know but and but yeah purchasing like back in the day this is how you purchased <laughs> this is all you did this is what your uh, your menu would look like <laughs> <laughs> That's your menu. You're like, okay, I'll this one. I want this one, right? Oh, sorry. I want that one right there. Oh, <laughs> right there. Oh, right this, there. Yeah. In the 90s, this is pretty much what your uh, menu looked like. Exactly. <laughs> you had one, one because there was, wasn't, you know, a variety of strains. It was just the one strain. And then this is what you could get. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
now now we have now we have the cheesecake factory menu you know where it's like <laughs> the seven pager like, you need 30 minutes no can you come back yeah. and you look at it some more <laughs> <laughs> oh oh funny all right let's take a look at um our vapes what do our vapes look like for dosing and you know this is actually you know approximate two because you have it's to a big time approximation is because it depends on your pull right and that's very right. individual how people um take in like inhale and pull on right their vape uh, pen their cartridges um so and i are, think it's mm -hmm. go ahead go ahead i'm sorry no go ahead no i think it's kind of funny because if newer people to vapes they tend to pull really long and hard because they don't know you know what i mean yes because they're not sure so right they're just not sure do that yeah. if you're not sure if you're not sure just take a little bit until you're sure yeah. of what it is and because yeah. it's right it's different with different um vape products i think because just right now there's not really like a standard I mean, there's like standard batteries and that, like different things like that, but they're all different. It I mean, is. Yeah. Like all, all the carts are different, like the different ones that you would use, like the pods and they're just all right. So this is a good graph to use just to see your dosage, basically, of, of a vape pen. Um, and it definitely helps. This actually helps with budget too, if you're looking at budget um and how to really your grocery shopping list this really helps right to see like how many times you you know you have to go back to the store to to buy something or like how long even like how long some like a vape is lasting you you're like right. how long is this even lasting me um right you know maybe a, a half a cart um maybe a half a gram lasts you you know a week i have no idea but maybe right. just that and then you could see um how much you're actually intaking every day. Well, and it's also good too, because um, one of the things you got to kind of be careful with, with bait, you don't want them to get, you know, you guys got to, they got to watch where, how they store them. Number one, number two, you don't want it to get too old, you know, yes. um, what vapes are made with. And, you know, Nate, our friend, Nate, he will go on for hours about it but you know the materials that the vapes are made with they do break down they break down under extreme heat and stuff so you know you don't you don't want to get a cartridge and have it last you for you know eight to nine months and and have the yeah and have that break down so this is a great kind of judge of how you're going to use it and maybe you don't need a full cart maybe a half a cart so you want it as fresh as possible and you want your vape to be you know not overly how do i want to say start to decay you know start like, to you know or just yeah old, yeah. And I also have a lot of people, yeah i also have a lot of people that come in that that say that their their vape was leaking and stuff like that but it's pretty much fish from heat being in your car or your purse or whatever it is mm -hmm. so, right a lot of people leave them in the car and that's just it's like a water bottle don't do it just don't do it. It's gonna leak out. Take like, your water bottle and your vape out of your car. <laughs> a lot of people do do that, especially the plastic bottles, like the plastic, right. your water. It's the same concept. The This is made out of metal, so the metal will leach into your right. and you don't want that. Don't right. want that. And, so, that metal, and that metal corrodes, and yeah. you don't want to inhale that. So mm -hmm. it's just, it's really good to be conscious of how you store your vape, how often you use it and to replace it you know you need to replace it yeah i mean neat tells us like a good rule of thumb is not to have a vape longer than a month right don't keep them in your car keep them in your fridge if you have them at home right. um those are pretty much the good rules of thumb to, right to go by um it's just it's just to keep your lungs healthy you know right All right, now here's another cool graph for our tinctures, and this will help you um, 
with the different bottle sizes, right? Like there's so many different, you got to really pay attention to the bottles and the labels on the bottles of what it's. it's that and also the droppers, Pam. Some of those droppers, that plunger at the top, that can be a bigger bulb. That'll be a bigger pull. So if you don't have a dropper that's marked like the one that's in the diagram, you know, you may be pulling a lot more it's frustrating to me when I see a direction on a tincture and it says a dropper full. Well, okay, is that dropper full all the way up to the plunger top or is a dropper full, you know, th three fourths of the way up yeah. and that plunger, you know, everybody will say one, one squeeze on the plunger is one dose. Well, that can vary. That can vary That's from. Yeah. Yeah. Better when you have numbers, right? Right. Right. Dosing. Right. <laughs> You can gauge it and with budgeting too for people on right. budgets, like it just helps you gauge your shopping list and like how how much you 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 need yeah then this is a good graph just to um help uh guide through that especially just like look at those labels because right cody like aren't they all different like they're literally all different <clears throat> yeah they're all different in their own way <laughs> They're so different. They're all so different. So you really got to look at, um, you know, in the bottle, like how much is actually in the bottle. Is it a 30 milligram bottle? Um, how many, you know, how many milligrams are per bottle in the size of the bottle? Usually the sizes are about, you know, 30 milliliter. But if not, you're yeah. going to have to change this number and do some math. If you have a bigger bottle, um, you can still use this, use this chart. Um, you just have to do a little math and change it a little bit. But you can still, right. it's still a good chart to start off with. If um, I mean, mostly, most bottles are 30 milliliters. That's like the average one. Um, yeah. But you can just have to change it and do some math. But it's a good good start. See how much yeah. you mm -hmm. We should actually have these in, we'll try to get these in the shop. Maybe we can have right. them like, for like a, you know, some handouts. And I would also suggest just, um, especially when you're trying to figure out your dosing and stuff, um, you can buy those stoppers, the droppers with the, that are my, you know, that are metered. Um, yeah. I would just, I would seriously invest in it or even those infant syringes, you know, it's just important when you are trying to find your sweet spot, especially on a medical base, you know, and it may change, you know, you may end up with a lot more pain one day. You may need to know you got to take a little bit more, but you got to know how much that more is, yes. you know, so without this kind of, you know, marked dropper, it's a little difficult. So if you get a product, um, I would, if it's not has a marked dropper, I would strongly suggest either purchasing one or, uh, like I said, the infant syringe. Usually, actually, you can usually ask your pharmacist, like go to your Yeah, they have them. Yeah, they have them. There and just say, hey, I need a marked syringe. Right, you, right. You know, or, you know, they usually, usually give them to you. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had some, I mean, I have a bunch of animals, so. I right? Things giving. <laughs> I actually have to give injections to one dog right now because she's oh. old. Ugh. And I'm like, man, I got through like now I'm doing injections again. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> full circle, Pam. Full circle. <laughs> actually, you never really. I thought I forgot how to do it. I was like, oh man, I kind of got worried, but you never really forget. No, <laughs> it's like riding a bike. Yeah, it's, I was like, oh yeah, I can, I can still do this. <laughs> yep. All right, so let's take a look at our edibles, which, right, when we we're saying about if you are having a party or anything, um, you know, a lot of people don't like to smoke. There's, you know, health risk with smoking, and people like edibles. And it's good to know, um, to, you know, especially like if you're having a variety of guests, right, that are, you right. know, are beginners, you know, some are intermediate, some, you know, maybe you have some people in that are, you know, mastered cannabis people. So <laughs> connoisseurs, you know, so, um, you want to have a variety. Um, usually you want to keep your, and talk to your, you know, your guests that ha that are new to cannabis. You don't want to give them a whole bunch. They ask, you know, you want to start them out at like one to five milligrams. I would even say anybody that's really, really new. I would, I would tell them just to do one or two milligrams and tell me how you right. feel. <laughs> right. Yeah. I had two girls come into the dispensary and, um, 
I, I, we got to talking, she was asking me a bunch of questions and stuff and she turned around and she was talking about an edible and that she was at some party. She ate the whole bar and I, and she had a really bad, she goes, Oh no, I'm staying away from the chocolate. I had a really bad reaction. And I, and so as I started to ask her questions, which, you know, I try to do, so I understand why they had such a bad experience. And then when she turned around and says, Oh yeah, she ate the whole bar. And I said, Oh my gosh, no wonder you had such a bad thing. And then when I explained it to her and I showed her and stuff, she was like, Oh my goodness. You know? So yeah. Yes. It was very much yeah. I mean, I would even suggest if you're having a party, label stuff, just label them. Yeah. Especially That's with a great idea. And especially if you're having like, I know people like to throw some like infused dinner parties too. Just label right. things for people. It's just easier. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. There is some new stuff at the green room though that I'm I'm stoked on the edibles. I mean, they're not healthy or anything, but they're delicious. The La Familia um, churros are so good. Like they're good. If you have the foodie, like they're Mazapan is <laughs> bomb. Oh, I haven't had that one. I'm going to have to go try that later today. Oh, churro. And the churro is just dangerous. Because then you just eat, you know, I ate one. It was 10 milligrams. And I'm like, well, I want like 10 more. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you get into trouble. <laughs> At least one full bar. At least I don't know. So funny. All right. So here's an edible dosing chart. And this is a really good chart um, to go by too. And this is from Leafly. And Leafly... We have them on our resource page. They're like our number one resource. They just have such They're great. They're a great resource. They're just a really good database of strains. And then they just have really good articles from really credible um, people. Right. Just really credible information. Yeah. And what I like about them the most, because I'm an academic nerd, is that um, they actually, most, most of the time, I'm not going to say all of the time, but most of the time, they will have a link to all of their sources. That's right. Like, them because then I'm like where'd you get that information and they usually have a link right there that I could go follow you know where they got that source from so that's why I really I really like them um so this is really cool um to go by and like you know kind of go by here um what a person if they're experienced with cannabis you know what they what their dosage might be um just to have an effect of feeling it you know not to go too much over but just to be feeling it and I'm usually right in this mark, which is pretty much right. Like, yeah. I'm not, you know, I'm pretty sensitive when it comes to edibles. My liver really doesn't like to metabolize it <laughs> much. And like that, uh, that when that metabolizes into the 11 hydroxy THC, man, it hits me hard. So yeah. I'm sensitive. I'm, the, I'm in, I'm in the yellow. You're like over here, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So feeling it. Where are you, Cody? Are you like way over here? You're like, yeah. you're like off the chart. <laughs> <laughs> In that really dark green area. <laughs> nah. I just snack on them. I don't know. They don't do anything. Here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you're probably just, you know, your, you know, your tolerance of the, that 11 hydroxy is just, you're just tolerant to it. Like you're just super tolerant. They taste so much. Like, yeah, when I first started to, like, go to dispensary back in the day, like, I went to go visit Harborside because, you know, it's, like, the Mecca. You have to go visit because it was, like, the first dispens legal dispensary. So I went there. It was years and years ago. And, like, we're sitting at a hotel, and I got a candy bar. Totally ate too much. Ate too much. I couldn't even order. Like, I was trying to order dinner. I couldn't even do it. I had it to my husband. I was like, I can't even talk on the phone. Here. <laughs> I feel like I get higher off of chocolates than I do anything else. You know, or, I mean, it hits you faster at least. It hits you faster. You know what I think it is, is because, I mean, my eyes keep watering today, um, is because, I mean, chocolate already, already like affects our endocannabinoid system in our- Absolutely. It's the cocoa. Like, yeah. The cocoa already kind of gets it's, our- It's um, the cocoa. Yeah. It makes us feel good already. And it's like a double right. whammy and making you feel good. <laughs> well, and then if you go to a dark chocolate, that's even another another element in it. So if okay. you go, and I've noticed the dark chocolates go a lot quicker, sell a lot quicker. Yeah, because yeah. it's like added, you know. It's an added boost. The added time. to our own endocannabinoids. Yep. 
Yep. I can probably only take like 50 milligrams of chocolate and then I'm, I'm good. You're like in here with the chocolates? Yeah, it's low. Yeah. They hit me like quick. I'm like, whoa. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> hit, me, they hit me. They hit me quick too. Yeah, you're right. Because like if I eat like something else, like gummies, like it takes a little longer and they mm. don't last as, longer, as long either. The chocolate definitely hits me harder, like faster and lasts a lot longer. Yeah. Your eyes are just super dry and dragon. My eyes? Yes. My <laughs> eyes are super dry. And because I actually have, um, you know, I have like the thyroid condition, I have Graves disease, but mm. I also have thyroid related eye disease it's called TED. And so Ted. Ted, I take eye drops. I've had surgeries. My eyes aren't even as bad as like a lot of people actually. Like it can get a lot worse, but I've had surgeries and like days like today, they'll just like constantly water. <laughs> I feel like edible, edibles make your eyes a lot heavier though. Like, oh, for sure. Cool. Like yeah. tinct when I take a tincture and an edible, um, either one of those, my eyes are, are affected. Definitely. Right. Like they feel, they actually feel like less um, pressure because sometimes I do feel like, you know, some, they don't feel right. And mostly because of the dryness, but they do. Well, the CBC, Pam, when um, you get in the CBG, CBG is actually one of the cannabinoids that you should be honing in on for your eyes. Mm -hmm. um, they actually do use it more in eye therapy for um, TED. Oh, that's awesome. Well, we yeah, so CBG is one of the cannabinoids that uh, you need to uh, hone in on. And CBG isolate. I'll go yeah. With yeah. That's well, good. yeah. And I got other products I can recommend later. Okay. Um, so this is a, a ratio example. And this tip right here is a very good tip because right? We don't have like that um, standard right now in the industry, like right. you know, CBD first or it's THC first, you know, cause it's always a CBD to THC ratio. Um, right. Isolates. Um, you just got to pay attention to those labels still. You just really got to pay attention, not, not only to how many milligrams a bottle, milliliters a bottle is and milligrams of the cannabinoid, but what is first, you know, in that right. ratio? Cause it could right. be, you don't want to like say over here on the 18 to one, if it's CBD first and you don't want to mess up and have the TH have it the other way and be 18 There's, CBD to one CBD. Cause then you'll have a whole other experience. Right. There's two <laughs> products. I, you know what? I don't know if they're still in the green room. I haven't been in there in a while, but there is two products that do have it reversed. The majority of products out there, I would say 75 to 80% of the products out there do have the CBD first but there is a small percentage. Um, and at one point there was two products out there that had the THC first. So that's why I put that comment in there because it, it's really important to know, important. you know, what's coming first. And, Cause you're right. And there's other, you know, ratios coming out too. You know, there's like a CBD to CBN ratio. There's right. different mixes. Right. So again, you just really got to pay attention to your labels. Make right. sure you pay attention to your labels. That's what you're yeah. looking for. And guys, that's, that's it. That's our cannabis map. There we go. Sweet. I would say like, these are our main resources for articles to look up dosing and more, more cannabis map. Um, Leafly and Project CBD, they have, I would say right now, their most, for me, their most credible uh, resource. Yeah. yeah. I, I refer back to Leafly so much. We do. And they're, just yeah. because they're, their contributors are really credible, they're usually scientists, right. doctors, pharmacists nurses. Um, yeah. So it's just, you know, good info, good resource. Nice. Anything else, guys? You have any other um, last comments for our cannabis map? <laughs> no, but I think people would relate more if we could add that into the school curriculum of cannabis math. <laughs> Maybe it would draw more interest on people paying attention in math, huh? <laughs> Oh my gosh, right? Like if you could take cannabis, man, like cannabis right. algebra. Right. <laughs> I can like well, we, learn algebra a little bit, a little bit easier that way. <laughs> right. Well, we've seen how many people became interested in the classic um, Long Beach City uh, College. So you, it's the new turn, right? Yeah. It is new. That's definitely true. I mean, yeah, cannabis, man. You cover all kinds of areas in that. Right. <laughs> 
All right, guys. Well, have a happy Friday. Have a, have great, a great weekend, day. everybody. Have a good first. All right, guys. Have a good one. All right. Bye. Bye.